The Parent and Family Resource What is the role of a parent? Eloisa discusses the role of parents on earth and why God made the provision to be a parent. The information presented in this video is based on Jesus' Divine Truth 2013 FAQ presentation on parents and children. Presented on the 4th of March 2021 at 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello, I'm Eloisa. Welcome to this presentation on the Parenting Principles Program. Firstly, just looking at why God made the provision to be a parent. So firstly, God is our real parent. We on the rest of the earth are based on that premise. We're all brothers and sisters, and so are the children in our care. And we, I suppose, are the guardians, if you like, of those children. And we also have the opportunity to educate children in what is um, loving and, and truthful and what is not. And to also, um, yeah, to help them to understand how the universe works and, and explore and discover and seek new information. So I feel like as a the provision of being a parent is a lot about education of both a child but also the parent because if we cannot teach a child something that we do not know and understand ourselves. And I feel like God's made this beautiful opportunity for the whole family, if you like, to learn simultaneously about all kinds of wonderful things. So based on some of the divine truth teachings as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene, or also known as AJ Miller and Mary Luck, they, um, Jesus has done a lovely presentation on the FAQ channel, of the Divine Truth FAQ channel, on relationships between par um, parents and children or adults and children. And he mentioned some of the things and the provisions that God ha has made. Now, I'm super summarizing. There's a whole lot of information there, which I suggest you go and look in detail. It's on the um, recommended viewing list. That is, um, a link is attached under this video. And I do recommend you go look at those because there's just lovely information and I find it so inspiring to listen to that material as I hear how God, what God has created and how God parents us and God's intentions for parents and things like that. And if I go, wow, yeah, I'd quite like, I'd like, I'd like to aspire to parent as God parents rather than a lot of the world's way of parenting. And that's where I'm personally sort of wanting to head is to become a better parent as godparents rather than being in my own uh, injured way of parenting, if you like. So in those FAQs, one of them, well, one of the main provisions that God uh, has made is for parents to actually teach children about God and teach children about, you know, love and expose them to that. That's not to impose a parent's belief systems upon the children. It's actually to just say, hey, look, this is like a reality, like there is a God and you can get direct communication from God and teach, teach them about the, the, the possibility that there is a God that exists and to also help them to understand that they can experiment with that and have a personal relationship with God. Now, I'm not talking about God as in a religious sense, I'm talking about as our creator and our real parent and I feel, you know, as this beautifully good wonderful entity in the universe who or out, I'm not sure outside the universe I'm, I don't have a full knowledge about you know how God was made or, or all any of those things or how God came into existence and possibly as I progress in love I'll learn more about that but based on the divine truth teachings I feel like yeah the main point is though is that it is a responsibility to, for a child to understand that God does exist and God is loving and God loves them and that they can have a personal relationship um, without imposing all our belief systems or expecting them to have a relationship or any of that. That is a free will choice that a child or you as an adult will need to make. And um, yeah, imposing our belief systems upon children is a very, very damaging thing. Another provision that God has made is for us to teach children about love and about the universe and how it works and you know and love I'm talking about truth here and a lot of other qualities as well come under under love and what love is and, and does and again we can't teach children unless we know some things ourselves so again gaining an education in love is so important and I 
do suggest those assistance group teachings in Divine Truth to, that would help you to um, learn a lot about love yourself. Part of sharing information about what love is, is sharing about God's laws and making God's laws transparent to children. So when, like, really it's the simple act of making transparent that when you break one of God's laws, then you experience pain and suffering. And when you live in harmony with God's love, you experience joy and happiness and pleasure and all kinds of different lovely things happen. And to make that transparent to a child. Now, if we don't understand God's laws, we can't make that transparent to a child either when they're breaking them. Because if we're breaking the same law, then the child is going to see us doing that and they're going to think that's what you do. Children have this lovely inbuilt sense of right and wrong in them or what's loving and unloving and sometimes quite a firm feeling of what's just and what's not. And that can help them a lot. It's like they're, they're sensitive enough to feel a lot of things if they haven't been shut down, you know, very rapidly. And, you know, you can appeal to a child's sense of, of what is loving and what is not. And they can often see that. Now, uh, I'm noticing, though, sometimes, you know, children don't, and we've got these things like autism and those other um, sort of conditions that are coming through where there's a lack of empathy and people aren't able to sort of, they're not, our uh, children are at a younger age sort of not connecting with what's going out in their environment, which is a reflection for the family and the parents, particularly of their own unhealed emotions of why they've attracted that into their lives as well. And there's a lot of spirit influence too upon those children. And those are topics that we can discuss in another presentation. Another provision of why um, God has created parents is for us to introduce children to the universe and to all of the, ex the like, um, external things that you can discover and learn through those processes. I kind of feel like the world is this huge playground. Jesus mentioned that once and I just love the idea of it just being this discovery a beautiful playground for people to discover in. And I noticed that we sort of grow up and we get set on work and we do all these things and we're not discovering the natural world and all of the secrets of the universe, if you like, and all the different things that God has put physically on the earth to help us to learn about love and to learn more about God's laws and how the universe operates and the, God's nature and personality. And I feel that just being open to these possibilities as parents that would um, enable children to be open to these possibilities as well. And children have a beautiful natural curiosity. Like I love when they ask why, 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 and they just keep asking why. And if you're humble to that and don't have an injury of like feeling annoyed when children ask you those things, a lot of the time they're asking some really good questions. And half the time I have no idea. Like our kids have asked so many questions that I can't answer, but they've really made me think about things. And I feel like that's a beautiful gift that you're given as a parent to. Um, to just watch these you know, new souls come in and become self-aware and become more in tune and in harmony with what's going on. So it's something wonderful to uh, explore and look at. It's also introducing children to things such as love, truth, humility, um, how to function in the world in a positive manner and have become more po um, happy. And another reason why God made the provision to be a parent is in order to educate a child about what you know, God's laws and about um, the way the universe works and about God, then the parent also needs to become educated in these things. A way to go about educating a child is to talk to them as they're growing up and to make transparent what's happening. Again, you need to understand what's happening, um, like in the sense of when I say what's happening, so how God's laws work and the pain and pleasure response of when, you know, pain when you break God's laws and pleasure when you, when you, when you're in harmony with them. And pleasure might be joy or happiness or enjoyment or smoother things and more opportunities being exposed. There's a lot of different ways that uh, I kind of feel like that you're rewarded for living in harmony with law and there's just a penalty and a correction when you're not. It's not a punishment and a reward system, it's a correction system, which is a lovely provision that God has made because it's like a mistake. Mistakes are just a, instead of it being a mistake and everyone get, we, well, I know I've in the past got very, very upset about making mistakes. Really, it's just a learning. And that's, I feel, how God's created the universe. You come in and as a tiny little soul and you just are there absorbing things and learning. And that's the process of becoming a self-aware human being, um, which is lovely. So if we loved children, you know, really, truly loved from God's perspective, we would just educate them by talking to them about various things that are happening in the world and we'd need to learn a whole lot of stuff and be open to the possibility that we're not always right and we're not experts as parents. 
and that we are finite beings and there's this infinite uh, God who knows everything and there's so many things to discover and uncover and understand and that children can actually open now, like widen our horizons if you like and expose us to new and beautiful, wonderful things as well. So the role of a parent is to open up possibilities for children and also expose them to various things that are happening as, you know, the constraints of law and of God's laws and also other areas that are happening in the, in the world. And I feel this is a responsibility of parents. So again, parents would need to work through certain things um, in order that they don't force or impose their opinions upon children and they don't make children believe something and have the same belief systems as they do. And that's a very hard thing to do. Uh, you know, it can be very challenging. I know how much I've wanted to impose change on the children or them to believe certain things. And when I've looked at, though, the things that I can see that I'm doing, you know, in the areas that I'm doing that, often it comes down to, you know, just really simply some feelings that I don't want to feel myself. And that's quite a selfish motivation in me just to make them think the same thing as me so I don't have to feel something. I do feel now, as I'm more comfortable with my own emotional process, that I'm far more okay with, um, I, I don't want to say I'm totally okay because I'm sure there's things that I haven't yet discovered that maybe I'm still imposing on the kids. And I know I'm still working through some things that I'm imposing on them as well. Yeah, I know I'm not like at, at one with God yet, so I don't have God's opinion on what is loving from all aspects on every single subject. And I won't until I get to that point. But I do see the importance of working through like identifying in myself, discovering in myself where I am imposing upon the children, where I am trying to influence them in a way to agree with me. I can be a positive influence in the sense of to learn about, you know, discover the universe and seek for themselves and become more ethical and all these kind of things. But as far as uh, imposing my belief systems upon them that are out of harmony with love, those are things that I don't recommend doing because at some point in the future, you'll need to correct those. And if you, uh, you know, as, as a child becomes older and older, the correction then is a little bit harder for a parent. And in fact, you can't do the correction process on your own because they are then making choices themselves and they might be influencing other people with the same you know, false beliefs that you are, you've taught them. So as a teacher, and that is what a parent is, we're the first teacher of children, we have quite a moral responsibility towards children in order to teach them things that are loving and truthful um, from God's perspective. And that means being humble and acknowledging that we may not be experts or right or know a lot of things that are about the universe and that we too need an education because there's a lack of education about the truth about God and the truth about love and the truth about truth even in the world at large at the moment. So, And there's quite a resistance to that as well. People want what they want and I'm talking I suppose a lot in the Western world too. But even in the third world, you know, they sometimes look to the West and think, oh, we want what they've got. But I don't think a lot of what the Western world is doing is that um, positive or loving. And it's something that I feel that we have a responsibility to correct. So I'm on a discovery to figure out all the things in myself that are contributing to the world as it is now and in a way to work through those things. And I see the family as like a little micro a microclimate of society at large, what's happening in the family is happening in the wider world because if you didn't accept it in the family unit, it wouldn't be accepted in the wider world. So, you know, I was having a conversation recently with some friends and we're talking about how, you know, manipulation in the world. Well, take it back to the family. How much manipulation goes in a family? How much vying for power and control and getting what we want is going on when the family system and then just take, you can almost look like the codependence in the, in the family and the power play in the family and the gender dynamics. All of those things are happening in the wider world too. And how can we expect them not? And that's why I feel like this Parenting Principles program is such a, a wonderful resource for anyone who's interested in it because you have an opportunity to take some principles, change yourself. And by changing yourself, you can have a positive influence on your family and if your children are young enough, they'll automatically change as you change because they're just responding to their environment. And when they're very young, that's what they do. Like sometimes I didn't even need to address a behavior with a child if I made a shift in myself. So if I worked through something in myself and I no longer accepted um, you know, certain behaviors in our home in a soul-based way, 
that behavior just stopped happening. And it was like, uh, often I felt like it was like magic. <laughs> These things would happen. I'd be like, how did that happen? Because it's not like you physically, I physically did anything. I did feel a lot. And by the feeling is where the change happened. And for me, it was like just little things, but they were huge for me. It was like, you know, I've mentioned it's like going from like chaos to having children quietly play or going from having kids who I'd made completely dependent on me for their food and for cleaning up and for pretty much everything in their life to now, you know, um, when they're, you know, the youngest are 11, they're 11, 12 and 13, they now cook all of their own meals or we share cooking the meals. I know that they can completely look after themselves. They can cook and they clean. They don't always do it well because they've got some emotional injuries around that and some rebellion and other things happening each differently for each of the children. But in saying that, they can do it and they know how. And I know they're educated. So it's now just a matter of working through some emotions. And as I was saying before, as a child gets older, they then have a choice and they're now acting on the injuries that they inherited when they were young children and they're acting on them and making choices as they're older. And now they're becoming adults. And so the things that I haven't corrected in my own soul, they may not choose to correct and they may choose to act out in their own lives. And part of that is my legacy. And I don't feel good about a lot of those things. And so I'm continuously speaking with the children in my care about those things. And we have conversations all the time about love and truth and ethics and about their injuries and how they treat other people and what's happening for them and all kinds of stuff. I know sometimes they don't want to have those conversations because they don't like thinking about it or the feelings that are exposed in those conversations. But I feel like it's a, a yeah, just a, I just feel an imperative attempt to correct the things that I have done wrong. Um, and I have no problem in saying that to the children of like, no, I, I did the wrong thing here. Yeah, so in our family, I'm now engaging some of these, you know, of, of actually being the role of, like an actual role of a parent. And I'm having to learn what a parent is because there's a lot of injury. I've had a lot of injured feelings and I suppose the world's way of looking at what a parent is. And there are so many reasons we, you know, become parents. So I suppose as a comparison, we could say, you know, in the world, some people want to just continue the family line. There is a feeling of that. Uh, some women just don't feel like they're real women or they're not, you know, they haven't fulfilled their duty as a woman if they don't have a child. Some people have children to feel loved. Some people have a children, you know, they're so needy that they want to have a child who they can look after. Some people have, have more of a feeling of love for a child. But if you really just loved all children, you probably wouldn't necessarily need to have your own children. Though I can see a beautiful experience of actually having been through the birthing process, which is an experience that is quite, quite an amazing, lovely experience. But I feel that there's many, many children already in the world who, if we really love people who possibly would like children but can't have children, instead of, say, doing IVF programs or, you know, trying to have their own child, they could look after someone else's child who, who you know, another adult who didn't have the capacity or desire to love their own child at the moment. There's many children who need a loving home. And so, you know, maybe when you've listened to this resource, you might you know, if you're not wanting to have children of your own or you can't have children of your own, you may choose to love someone else's child. And that would be a very uh, lovely gift to give them. And also for you to learn a whole lot of things about yourself <laughs> and the world and all kinds of things. Yeah, look, and I, I also think there's different feelings like in men than women. Like I think some men, you know, just uh, they don't, don't want children, but their wives want children. You know, some men, they also really adore children and want to have a child of their own, you know, and they want to be a better dad than their dad was. Or there's so many different reasons that we, we have children and everyone's going to have their own reasons. And it's worth being truthful with yourself about what your reasons were. And I'll probably share some things about my reasons more extensively in the future and what I've sort of come to realize about that. Um, I know for myself, I really don't feel like I actively chose and desired to love the children until probably like three to five years um, into actually being a parent. Though I've got some sadness about that, that's the facts of the choices that I made. Now I, I definitely have a desire to love these kids and get to know them. And also any child I meet, to be honest, I'm, I'm quite curious in, in who they are and 
what they love and what they want to do or what they enjoy doing. And I'm very interested in their personality and nature and how they choose to develop their character. Anyway, I think there's a lot of possibilities and opportunities for adults and with relationships with children. And you don't have to be a parent to have that kind of relationship. But yeah, we've just sort of discussed here some of the provisions that God's made for, you know, parents. Discussed a couple of things as taught, um, you know, as shared by Jesus via the Divine Truth FAQ channel on parents and children. Just about, you know, why God made the provision for um, people to be able to be parents. And, you know, in summary, we discussed just a parent's role of introducing or the possibility of God and God's laws and all of the external wonderful discoveries you can make in the universe and just le like educating the child of all of these different possibilities and teaching them, I suppose, the skills or giving them the tools that they could actually explore those for themselves. And also the constraints and restrictions of God's laws. And so we briefly just touched on how living in harmony with law brings a lot of pleasure and joy and happiness. And living in disharmony with God's laws brings pain and suffering. So that's a, just a brief explanation and there's far more to discover and understand about what being a parent from God's perspective is. Why I wanted to make the contrast of what the world's way of desiring to be a parent and the, you know, God's role of a parent is, is that you can see it's very, very different. God doesn't feel like of owning children or have an investment in children doing certain things or being a certain way. It's more about allowing a child to discover the world and the universe and the truth about God and the universe and everything. And left to a child's own devices with the education that those are possible, who knows what decisions that child would make. And I think depending on an environment and depending on how transparent and how sensitive that child was to God's laws, I I do feel that probably a lot of children would choose to live in harmony with God's laws and probably develop a relationship with God. I'm not saying all would, but I can just see how much influence a parent or adults have on children and what a destructive influence we often have on them by imparting our own unhealed emotions and beliefs about God particularly and how hurt we feel with our own parents, which we then impose or imprint upon God rather than dealing with our pain and our hurt and our false beliefs about everything in order that then children could actually make their own decisions. You know, often if you come from a religious family, then you're forced into, you know, being religious like your family. Um, if you're born into a family who really has a lot of um, animosity or anger towards God, then you often feel like, no, I don't want anything to do with God. Now imagine if we were, had a different approach and we didn't have all of those feelings in us, because remember, not what you say. So you could have a feeling of like, oh, no, I don't, I feel like God's not nice and I don't really want a relationship. And you could say, well, look, there is a God and you could say these words. But remember that a child is going to respond to what your soul based feeling is. And if you disapprove of having a relationship with God and if you don't want to know about God and you don't want to deal with your issues with God, your children are going to inherit a lot of those feelings and take your example. Or they may rebel against you and become heavily religious. You know, there are a number of different options that could happen. But either way, is that a true discovery of their own um, heartfelt longing or desire to really know? Or is that just responding to the environment that they've been brought up in? And, you know, look, some people do grow a love and a real love and desire for God, regardless of their circumstances. And that's a beautiful quality and, and you know, a lovely um, aspect of their soul. Obviously, they've been open to doing that. Um, but there's a lot of like even in religions, when people talk about God, which often they're talking about Jesus and Jesus isn't God. Um, Jesus is a, is a son of a God, just like, you know, we are sons and daughters of God as well. But, you know, God is our real parent. And I know for myself, my own discovery of God has been quite, uh, it's been very personal. And it hasn't really, I've had to, not had to, but I've, yeah, no, I have. I've, I've really, I've had to feel through certain feelings that I had about what, you know, misconceptions about God and what God is, it, it was like. And it's only by receiving feelings from God that I've started to, well, I trust God and I feel God is this beautiful entity who I'm really interested in getting to know. And that's a, a shift for me. 
Whereas um, before I just sort of, I just didn't really think about it one way or the other because there was too much um, emotion really in it for me that I didn't want to feel. And as I said, for me, it's an ongoing um, pursuit and I kind of look at it now, it's like I'm, I'm a so-called, in an, well, I'm in an adult's body, but I feel like I'm a child for the first time discovering um, all of these things. And I feel that's probably what it would be like if I was, had been open to these possibilities when the children were very young. I would have proposed the possibilities and then just made transparent, you know, like when they're in harmony or out of harmony with law, when they were, you know, connecting to the conscience or they weren't, you know, if I was sensitive enough to feel that and encourage them to pray more and to feel more and to be themselves more and to follow their passions and desires more. And, you know, some of those things I, well, a lot of them I didn't do um, until they were quite a number of years older. And I can now see how they're playing those things out. And so, you know, they're not yet interested in having a relationship with God. Sometimes there's curiosity about God, but not yet this passionate desire for a relationship. And that's on me and their dad because of our beliefs and our emotions that prevented that. So we didn't do, you know, these things that we discussed of how, why God has made the role of a parent and different things that parents can or could do if they, if they wanted to. And, yeah, we live with the results of that. I also don't suggest that you take the theory and as a, you know, say, oh, hey, well, this is how I'm supposed to be and this is what I'm going to do. I encourage you to feel through the reasons why you weren't doing it before you heard this. <laughs> and also feel how you really feel about these things. And you don't need to share that with your kids or, you know, that's a personal process that you go through. And once you're through it and you, if you do have a passion, you know, for God or you do feel like there's a possibility of this and you want to share it, you know, go ahead. If you don't have the same feeling, it's words are cheap and I wouldn't recommend saying things that you don't feel in your, in your heart. So that kind of wraps up, I suppose, the role of a parent and God's version and that, super briefly about some of the, I suppose, the key, you know, some of the things that parent could do if they were living in harmony with the role as God's created it. And also a few of the, you know, just literally touching and mentioning a few things in the world of how there's a difference um, to that role. So that one wraps up that. That brings me to the end of a brief description of the role of a parent.